Hello and welcome to this edition of the Evening Review. My name is Taiwan Jabela, your host for tonight. It's a jam-packed show tonight. Of course, uh, we are having uh, some great anti-SGBV uh, message from our friends at uh, AB and Bev, and uh, later also some good message about road safety this holiday by our friends at uh, Savannah Lemon. But before that, let's have a quick look at today's front page of Namibian Sun. Tonight on the show we are joined by two well-known faces, uh, uh, Michael Amshelelo and uh, Gregory Klute, who were both uh, have been in the news uh, lately because of uh, activities related to their work in business, which is forex, uh, forex trading. Welcome, gentlemen, to the show. Thank you. For <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so much has happened um, in the past week. Um, First, we, we heard that uh, your, there was a ruling in, in court in your favor mm -hmm. where the judge basically said that your, your items that were seized by the state must be released. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, some other things happened. Maybe just give us a, a lowdown of what happened actually uh, since last week. Yeah, I'm basically sitting at the same position <laughs> where you're sitting. I yeah. also heard. Yeah. Uh, there was a judgment in our favor on Friday, yeah. and also heard on on Monday that it's no longer in our favor. Uh -huh. So what happened actually on Friday? There was a judgment passed in the High Court, yeah. uh, indicating that we all our assets are to be unfrozen, uh -huh. uh, which involves obviously the money, uh, cars, and all other equipment that was seized by the state mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. However, um, on Monday which was yesterday yeah. for that matter we were served with another so a summons or notice that the prosecutor general's office managed mm. to get another order to freeze the assets namely all the money in the bank accounts mm. and obviously the vehicles mm -hmm. we were only given back uh, phones uh, um, documents uh, computers but the things that really mattered yeah. uh, in this particular case, the money of the investors mm -hmm. were for some reason kept back by the state. I see. Yeah. M Michael, what did you make of uh, the, those developments, especially the letter, the, 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 the latest development? Well, what, what, what's funny for me is that um, I, I read the court order. Uh, the prosecutor general's office filed their motion at 9 a.m. on Friday, which yeah. was the 4th of December. Yeah. And our judgment was due to come out at 10 a.m. Yes. So this basically one makes one hinder. Did the prosecutor general's office have foreknowledge that the court was going to rule in our favor? Mm -hmm. And that is why they basically filed for a motion an hour before our judgment. Yeah. And what's funny enough is that uh, our court case, uh, the high court application, took almost a year in order for us to get the ruling in our favor. Mm -hmm. And the prosecutor's office basically applies within a couple of hours yeah. and they get the ruling in their favor. So justice for me seems to be when it's not in your favor, it goes very slow. Yeah. And when it's for the others who are prosecuting you, it's very fast. So for me, I start thinking that perhaps uh, it's true that 
our justice system has been captured mm -hmm. by a few individuals and uh, justice is not seems to be done because it's not being done. Mm -hmm. The court ruled on Friday to say that uh, those warrants were uh, null and void. They yeah. do not belong in a court of law. In fact, the, 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 there was no rule of law in terms of those search and seizure warrants. Yeah. So we do not understand in terms of uh, what is it that uh, the Prosecutor General's office used in order for them now to basically continue holding on to our assets. And funny enough is the same Prosecutor General released just last week uh, a $400 million fishing vessel that belonged to the famous fish rod. So yeah. funny enough, uh, they want to keep a couple of vehicles worth a couple of, uh, not they're, they're not even worth 10 million, yeah. but a fishing vessel that's <laughs> worth 400 million, they're like, yeah, <laughs> that one can go. But uh, 10 million, uh, <laughs> this must first be packed here. So. <laughs> it, it, it's very funny, I should say, Toibu. Yeah, yeah. But, Gregory, maybe to come back to you. Mm -hmm. the, the, so the ruling happened. Um, so, so you are saying you only learned on Monday, which was yesterday, that indeed there's been new developments. Exactly, yeah. So between Friday when the favorable uh, judgment c came out, mm -hmm. between then and up to the point where you, you then get to learn that... Uh, another development came through. What, what happened during that space there? Um, have you sort of, you know, maybe even gone back to some of your investor, investors to say, look, we have now uh, scored this victory and therefore we will start with the process of doing business with you again? Mm -hmm. or, or, or what happened in that space? Well, to you, it was actually a no-brainer when the news broke out on Friday. It was basically all over social media. Yeah. And uh, most of our investors already knew mm -hmm. about the, the development that our we've managed to score a victory on Friday on the mm. High Court. Mm. Uh, um, so there was no need for us at that given point in time. And luckily, we didn't go further or uh, further step to say that, guys, we will refund you guys or mm. whatever the process is. Mm. 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 So we left until Monday. For some reason, our spirit still was dead. Mm -hmm. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Just calm down. Don't say anything. Don't count your <laughs> eggs <laughs> while, <laughs> your chickens while the eggs didn't hatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what happened is we didn't have any form of communications with any of our investors yeah. until Monday where we got the news again to say that listen guys uh, I'm sorry uh, your investors are not going to get their money back mm -hmm. and now uh, until this specific point we haven't communicated with them at any given time yeah, yeah. so it's, it's really heartbreaking and it saddens me to, to to see that the state would rather want the general public, which are obviously um, referring to the investors, mm. to continue suffering. Mm, mm. I mean, uh, um, we have a, a case in the magistrate court yeah. uh, where the prosecutor general cannot pronounce herself on this matter to say if she's going to prosecute or not, yeah. and it's going to take another six months for her to make that decision. Mm, mm, However, mm. here we have hours. Mm. So you, you need to understand how does the balance of life work when it comes to the law in our country indeed yeah and and michael the the w the ruling in your favor was 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 really on on was a technicality um so in other words it was it was not a, a judgment on the merits of the case itself mm -hmm. uh, but you brought uh, you, you challenged the technicalities in the manner in which this um, seizing of assets was executed do you think that had something to do with then the PG coming back and say, look, we're not going to lose on a, on a technicality. We'll, we'll rectify our, our, our mistakes if we did any, and therefore leading to what she did? No, uh, Toivo, what, what needs to be understood is that the, the court or the law is not something where you skip one process and decide you're going to come back yeah. and do another process. Yeah. Uh, you have to follow all due processes. Mm -hmm. Because clearly you can see how everything was done in a rush manner. Yeah, yeah. It was basically them rushing to say, okay, we are going to arrest this individual. We do not care what the charges are because they kept changing the charges. Mm. At first they were saying is this, at second they were saying this, thirdly they were saying this. So there were never concrete charges yeah. to start off in the beginning. Yeah. So it was a thing of, uh, let us arrest him and it's a thing of hopefully there will be charges against these individuals. Mm -hmm. We'll just cook up as many charges. Let's hope one or two basically are sustainable and then we basically work on those one and two yeah. so it's not an issue whether it was a technicality or what things need to be done in accordance with the law mm. not in accordance with what toivo feels on that particular day mm. because this is where the abuse of power comes from mm -hmm. so if me and toivo all of a sudden uh, we have a brawl over social media 
perhaps we do not agree on something, you now use your office to say you're going to settle a personal score. Yeah. Offices cannot be used to settle personal scores, unfortunately. Indeed. So things need to be done in accordance with the law Indeed. and not in accordance with what Toivo or whatever the prosecutor general, the magistrate, the investigating officer or Bank of Namibia, yeah. whatever they think. Yeah. It needs to be done with the law because yeah. there are certain things that they have not done by their book. Yes. And unfortunately, when you want to prosecute someone, you need to prosecute them by the book. Whether that person did things not by the book, yeah. unfortunately, the rule of law needs to be upheld yeah. at all times. I agree. I've asked you this question before, um, <coughs> Michael, I think the, the last time you came around, and I was saying, because what you are saying now here, mm -hmm. and you've, you, it's a position that you've maintained for, for a long time, mm -hmm. is you, you seem to suggest that um, this is not just a matter of law, that there seems to be other underlying issues there uh, that are being used now to get at you and, and Gregory, of course. What, what is your suspicion? What, what, what have you done to anyone? No, it's not what have we done to anyone. Like, like mm. I've said before, Toivo, uh, in 20, 2018, yeah. uh, in December, uh, I went on a rant on social media, mm. uh, a huge, very lengthy rant, which led to me actually starting my own political party, which mm. is called Power. Mm. And obviously, I used my resources yeah. to basically promote Power in terms of it becoming a newly block kit and on the block. Mm. And in the last 30 years, there was no single political party yeah. that ever utilized m billboards across the country to promote uh, its party. Mm. For the first time, I've actually seen the ruling party needed to actually fork out money <laughs> to actually promote themselves. It's just a little too late. Uh, yeah. they, they should have uh, gone with my idea of billboards a long time ago. Yeah. But obviously, one can clearly see that this is politically motivated. Yes. And obviously, uh, uh, them being the financial uh, intelligence center, they could have picked up and flagged payments that are made to uh, political opponents or political rivals of yeah. the current regime. Mm. Uh, uh, I cannot say which individuals are funded in terms of uh, oppositions or political parties, yeah. but I have funded those, mm. uh, including my own party. Mm. So obviously, they could have picked up on that and said, well, this individual looks like a possible threat yeah. and a problem to us so how do we deal with this individual Indeed. and then uh, funny enough also if, if you look at how the events played out uh, we had a whole full year where things were just being postponed in yeah. the uh, in, in, in both the magistrate and the high court yeah. and eventually after another election went by that's all of a sudden that we get the ruling that is in our favor mm -hmm. so do you clearly see that the powers that be realize that, okay, well, wait. Uh, in, in fact, why I'm thinking they went and ruled against us is because the money for most, which I'm most certain of is no longer there. Yeah. So now they're buying themselves up. Guys, now we are releasing these things, but you know very well these individuals' cars have been damaged. The money is not in the bank account. So what are we doing? So <laughs> let us quickly nullify this order and say we are going to keep holding on to that because up until now we do not know the status of whether the money is still in the bank accounts. Yeah. We do not know whether the vehicles are still in uh, sound driving shape or whatever the sort is. Mm. So all of those things are unknown to us. Yeah. And we know the state very well that we have a habit where things just go missing. If uh, the prosecutor general cannot prosecute on GIPF 600 million missing funds or plus more than that, then it clearly tells me that if our money goes missing, then who are we going to start asking for? Who's going to be prosecuted? Yeah. Who's going to be brought to book? At the end of the day, people are most probably going to start thinking that we are in cohort with the regime mm. to basically steal and loot uh, our investors' funds. Yeah, yeah. Because you cannot tell people on Friday that the court ruled in your favor, and all of a sudden on Monday, you need to go back to the same public and tell them that no, uh, the court actually had ruled in your favor, but they decided to rule against you again. Mm. So it now starts looking like we and the state, we are actually in the same bed, yeah, yeah. trying to most probably collude or collide and actually eat the funds or whatever the case mm -hmm. is, which is not the case. Yeah. Uh, Gregory, how has your life been impacted by, by this um, uh, the initial seizure of your, of your assets, um, both at a personal level and also your business. Um, 
I'm sure you, you have people probably calling and saying, look, you know, what now? We, we've invested our funds with you. Just, just how has this affected you? Oh, it's, it's been a terrible blow. Um, it's, it's been a difficult experience. Yeah. I mean, if, if it's one thing where you lose your own money. It's another thing where you've been entrusted by someone else with their money and you actually, uh, due to certain uh, um, rules that were not followed by the relative uh, institutions, mm -hmm. that these individuals' money were taken away from us without them given the opportunity or without us being given the opportunity to then uh, first give back the investors their money. Mm -hmm. Because this is basically what happened here. Yeah. Uh, according to uh, what we've been charged on is we've contravened uh, uh, the Banking Act, Section mm. 55A, or something of the sort. Mm. Uh, I'm not a legal person or expert. Mm. However, if you look at the history of such cases similar to ours, yeah. you will find that the same uh, uh, central bank would first uh, uh, engage with these parties, if, if, if you find us contravening a specific act, to then uh, confirm, do you guys understand that you are operating where you need specific licenses and so forth. Yeah. Do you understand that you're breaking a law by what you're actually doing right now, mm -hmm. which was not the case. Mm -hmm. And the public was not in warned to say that, listen, there's such and such a uh, company. Yeah. Just like when, uh, if, if you're running an uh, unlicensed micro lending company, and Visa would normally post in yes. newspapers. I mean, these are normal procedures mm -hmm. which were not followed in our case. Mm -hmm. So this thing has actually caught us off guard. However, I mean, uh, there are certain investors in which you need to understand. Mm. I mean, people have put in their money due to school for their children, weddings, medical, to pay off houses. Mm. People have taken out loans. So you need to understand there will obviously be a level of frustration, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes you will get threats on your life. Yes. And uh, however, some of them have been a bit lenient, but I mean, you can only be patient to a certain extent. Yes. Uh, from a business perspective, it, 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 it really hasn't, uh, affect us in a negative way because we've always been doing business. Mm. It's not something that we've just learned. I mean, if you look at our background, we've literally built businesses mm. and then we've maintained businesses. Mm -hmm. So uh, obviously from a reputational perspective, one or two people will say negative things. Mm. But in terms of operating a businesses, we've, we've tried to, to uphold that. Mm. I mean, we, we're not looking as flashy <laughs> as we used to. But uh, the fact of the matter is we're still surviving. We still have people working for us. Mm. Uh, so from that perspective, we, we're trying to keep our, our heads up. Mm. So then it comes back to the situation that we're in right now, where people had a glimpse of hope, yeah. and then it's then again snatched away yeah, from them. Taken away from them. Yeah, so it's very difficult. Here. Yeah. And, and it, when you and Michael were doing this business, when you were, you were entering the Forex space, mm. did you know that you were, as, as alleged, contravening any law of the land and you just said, you know, maybe we'll get away with it? Or it is a case of uh, a young business guy, young business guys who thought they were really, really in line with everything and they were just doing that knowing at the back of their mind that it was actually legal? No, not at all. Uh, I mean, uh, we consulted uh, a legal individual who actually also is a business partner of yeah. ours. Yeah. Unfortunately, now they've passed on, may their souls rest in peace. Mm. And uh, he basically told us that, no, this is basically within the parameters of the law. Yeah. I mean, what you're basically doing is, the person is borrowing company X a certain amount. Mm. And company X is then going into an agreement with this individual, and they're agreeing to say, this is the amount of interest they're gonna get after this certain period, mm. and this is actually uh, the, the that the time period or the time frame that they're gonna have in terms of that the company needs to pay back this individual's money. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the law, that's basically business 101. There's nothing uh, illegal that you're doing or anything of the sort because mm -hmm. as a company, you can actually get uh, an individual to borrow your money and then you agree to say, Toivo, after three months, I'm gonna pay you back your initial plus X amount. It mm -hmm. happens all the time. Guys get tenders, they don't have the money, what do they do? They go borrow the money. Mm. And then they agree to say the money will be paid over a certain period after a certain time. Is it illegal to do that? Mm. Is it illegal for you to borrow a certain individual company an X amount and then you guys agree in terms of how much the interest is going to be mm. and over what period 
and how are the repayments going to be. There's nothing illegal about that. Yeah. And that's basically what we did. Yeah. The only thing that we did is we managed to do it successfully. Yeah. And at a scale that was so grand and so everyone could literally see that, hey, something is happening here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's about it. Greg, any, yeah. any comment on that? Uh, have just, you just, <coughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. just to add on that, I mean, yeah. we, 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 I mean when, when once we did the uh, forex trading, I mean, we had a meeting with Bond. They summoned us before. Mm. Uh, they said, uh, guys, uh, we just want to get your business module. And then we, we did our presentations. They came back after a week or two or three weeks. And then they said, okay, no, there's no problem with that. Yeah. Um, and, and it was a meeting with minutes and records on it. Mm. And which is what boggles my mind is that if we went above and beyond that, why wasn't the same procedure then followed to say, listen guys, we now understand that your module is slightly changed. Can you just share more light on that? Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that's where one gets to see that, uh, you know, um, nobody would like to do anything deliberately wrong. Yeah. So. W w w was, was business working? Um, uh, for you guys it was working. Definitely we could see yeah. that it was working. Mm -hmm. uh, you had flashy cars. You had uh, 17 million, I'm told, uh, in, in the bank that was then. No, uh, in so fact, in Tuevo, Tuevo, uh, yeah. uh, you know, I, I feel sometimes insulted when yeah. uh, you, you can clearly see these guys have no clue yeah. of what they're talking about. Yeah. 17 million is what we roughly pumped out in a week in yeah. terms of payouts. Uh -huh. So when they come and then they write nonsense like 17 million, yeah. I feel insulted. This is like James Atikulupi hearing he only laundered 1 million. <laughs> He will feel very much insulted. <laughs> exactly the point. You see, he that's will feel <laughs> insulted. <laughs> that's exa exactly the point. So it means that the business was thriving. Um, mm. From your end, because of course we don't know who your investors were, it was mm -hmm. difficult to see. Yes. But for you as the owners of the business, we mm -hmm. could see that uh, you, are, you are living uh, very well, that uh, someone, something is working somewhere. Was it, w could the same be said for your clients? Well. Were you paying them well, out? Were you, you know? With if, if you can find any client of ours that until the 10th of, so the 10th of 9th of October, until the day we were apprehended or arrested, who would confirm to you, say, I've never received my money that mm. I've initially put in, plus the interest on, on it, yeah. and I'm ready to swallow the blade. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is what I can, I can I'm, that's the extent I'm willing to go to. Yeah. So because there was it, no individual yeah. that didn't receive any of their money until the day all our accounts were frozen, yeah. and then until the day obviously we were apprehended. Uh, that makes sense. There was a guest on, on this show a couple of months ago. Um, was it Pandu? Was it? Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, because the, the, I, I put the same question to him mm -hmm. and say, as, a, as an investor into the, into the scheme, were you actually uh, getting a return on your investment? Mm -hmm. And he said, yes, he was. Uh, so, so maybe that makes sense now to also what you're mm -hmm. saying. So what is the way forward, gentlemen? What, is, um, what are you hoping to see? What, uh, what are your aspirations as far as this matter is concerned? I mean, uh, Toivo, ours has always been to ensure that people get what is called economic reality. Yeah. Because let's look at the current landscape in which our country is. Yeah. We've been downgraded into junk status. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's as far as we are as a country. Yeah. That basically means borrowing is going to become difficult for the country to borrow money. Uh, it's also going to become difficult for lenders to pay back their mortgages and things of that nature. Yeah. So ours will always be to strive to ensure that we find modules that can work so that we can bring about economic reality to our people. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that will always be our modus operandum. And obviously, we will continue fighting yeah. Uh, to get back what rightfully belongs to us. Mm. But uh, w we need to understand that uh, mm. these things, unfortunately, they are, they, they are costly, yeah. first of all. Yeah. And uh, they also are very lengthy, yes. as we have seen. Yes. So we are going to attempt again uh, to lodge uh, another application. Uh, only time will tell in terms of how long it's going to take and yeah. things of that sort. But uh, what I still find fishy is that uh, the PG needs six months to decide on whether she's going to prosecute our case in the yeah. magistrate court. Yes. But for some reason, she's got a keen interest in what is happening in our case as well. Yeah. So if they can decide to say they want to hold on to our assets mm. 
uh, yet they are taking six months to decide. And this is actually the lengthiest time mm. a prosecutor general's office needs to actually decide on a case to be yeah. prosecuted. Yeah, yeah. So they are now perhaps weighing their option to say, guys, should we really go ahead and make uh, laughing stocks of ourselves or should we somehow drop the charges and if we drop the charges, then what about the counter lawsuits and things of that matter? Mm. So I think that's what they're worried most about. Yeah. Two last questions. Yes. One to each one of you. Um, for you, Greg, is <coughs> are the, because obviously you're not the only guys in the forex space in the country. In your observation, how has similar operations been treated? In other words, has everybody who's doing forex trading been arrested as yourselves and having their items and assets uh, seized by the state, or is it only you? Uh, that's a fa that's to you. And to Michael, are you monitoring the process of uh, the new PG being <laughs> appointed? Because you've referred so many times to the PG, um, is it something because of the position that you find yourself in uh, regarding your own case now? Is it something that so, so, sort of triggers? the thought and interest that is this recruitment process of the PG and therefore uh, just hoping that whoever gets appointed will be fair of, uh, than the one that you think is actually being uh, very biased. We can start with you <laughs> first, <laughs> Greg. <laughs> uh, obviously, Trevor, uh, if you are in a specific industry, you obviously know uh, the other guys also, uh, who are also similar in the line of work that you do. Mm. However, uh, I have no knowledge of any other guys that has been uh, arrested or they are uh, uh, assets being seized. Mm. Apart from one guy, I can't recall his name now at the moment. Mm. But that's the, about the only matter or case that I know about. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying that we should go out there and <laughs> <laughs> arrest everyone. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that if something is wrong, yeah then obviously we all should be calmed with the same calm. Indeed. You can't say, here I'm using it this way and here I'm going it this way. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, so that's where it comes to a point that you don't want to put it out there, but you, you, you tend to feel that you become a specific target. Yeah, yeah. Because if driving without a license is wrong for everyone and someone else does it and you allow this, then obviously you see yeah. there is a, a level of of, of selectivity, basically. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. I hear you. Michael. Yeah, no, uh, uh like I said before, I've, I've been an active participant of this country. Yeah. Now, it doesn't matter in terms of who tomorrow becomes appointed the PG of this country. Mm. But what needs to be, what, what matters is that the process should at all times be transparent yeah. and it should also be fair mm -hmm. uh, because right now i see the whole issue is tainted yeah. i mean uh, how does an individual go on twitter rant about the qualifications being too high mm -hmm. and tomorrow the qualifications become lowered yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't work like that you are either the most competent individual for that position or you're not competent at all yeah. and s we, we have seen too many people being bulldozed into positions yeah. and this is africa people become bulldozed into positions so that they can obviously protect their masters. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in, in the case of a PG, it's a very important institution. Mm. I mean, we've heard of cases or alleged allegations against the prosecutor general's son yeah. where he was accused of rape mm -hmm. and that file just went missing or it got struck off in the court yeah. So we do not want those things. Yeah. I want a prosecutor general, if they hear tomorrow the son is accused of rape or murder, the son needs to be prosecuted the same way all our other sons and daughters and mothers and fathers of this country are prosecuted. Indeed. The person should be fair at all times. Yeah. That means that if it is your son, your friend's son, or whoever gets accused of any allegations or whatsoever, mm -hmm. they basically go through the fair due process of, of, of our country. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, over the years, we have seen too many blatant mistakes being done by the current PG. Indeed. And obviously it raises eyebrows as an individual to say, why is it in certain instances the prosecutor general is very fast to act, yeah. and in certain instances the prosecutor general is very slow. And speaking about that, uh, Toivo, uh, in recent weeks uh, there was a time where the fish rod accused uh, needed to pay off a farm. Yeah. And these guys managed to pay off their farm 
because apparently yeah, it was only 11 days that the accounts were frozen and after that the accounts were unfrozen. Yeah, yeah. It's been a year, Toivo, that our bank accounts have been frozen. Mm -hmm. And throughout this whole year, never once was it unfrozen so that we can quickly pay yeah. Pit or Quos <laughs> or Pomp or to pay Shanika whatsoever. Yeah. So where then is the fairness in this whole process? I hear you. Do you, do, you, do you see the, that's where my bone of contention becomes, that's where my frustration comes from. Mm -hmm. To say that if you're going to treat everyone, then treat them all the same. Yeah. There's no thief who's better than the other thief. Yeah. There's no saint who's better than the other saint. Yeah, I hear you. So everyone should be treated equally. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the PG's office, we need someone who's competent. Yeah. Competence is the most important thing. Indeed. Somebody who's going to basically, if it's your son, you prosecute your son. If it's your daughter, you prosecute your daughter. I hear you. Anyone gets prosecuted if they are not behaving. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. Gentlemen, thank you for coming. Thank you, Trevor. I appreciate your time. Really. Great. Thank you. Okay. So that is uh, Michael Amshelelo and uh, Gregory Klute speaking, of course, about uh, the recent events regarding their business of uh, Forex trading that was uh, slightly, uh, which slightly got a relief last week, but then uh, mo Monday this week the state decided to come with another blockage to their business. Thank you for watching. Welcome to today's show and today I'm, I'm joined in studio with Alexandra Besson from ABN Beth Namibia. Alexa, how are you? Fine, how are you? I'm good, I'm yes. good. So how do you feel to be here in studio with us today? Very excited. Representing yes. ABN Beth. Yes, very we happy to be here. We haven't seen ABN Beth in quite a while. So um, in regards to, to the No Excuse campaign, what can you tell me today that um, AB and Beth, what is, what's their corporate responsibilities um, towards this campaign and driving this campaign forward? Yes. So just for a brief introduction, just because we've been so absent, as you said, um, AB and Beth uh, is the world's largest brewer. And mm -hmm. we entered the African market with our acquisition of SAB Miller in 2016. And then we officially became AB and Beth Namibia mm -hmm. in 2017. So for us, responsibility is very important. And yes. we have set sustainability goals. And these involve our commitments to the environment, but more importantly, smart drinking as well and with yeah. smart drinking we're just trying to reduce the harmful use of alcohol and that's where no excuse comes in because no excuse is our social marketing campaign and it's aimed at driving behavioral change particularly yes. with men yes and it, it what we want to do is encourage men to put an end to violence against mm. women because you know majority of the crimes are committed by men and majority of the victims are women so we thought that rather we speak to men yeah. Yes, and, th and that's what we're trying to do with this campaign. That makes a lot of sense. So that would explain why you guys probably chose um, the Beer Black label to represent this ca specific campaign. Mm -hmm. Yes, very much so, because um, Carling Black Label is our largest brand in Namibia, and it's one of the biggest brands in Africa yeah. as a whole. And also, it's a brand that's linked to a lot of masculinity, and it's always speaking to champion men. Mm -hmm. And so because of that slogan, we decided, you know what, champion men know that there's no excuse for women abuse, and yes. that's the message that we're sending yes. and we're driving champion men to make this change in society and we're calling mm. Namibian men to take a stand. Yeah. You know that they always say like um, charity starts at home. So within the ABN Beth family, what have you done as an organization, as a corporate um, to instill these values and views within the men within the company? So this is the first time we're rolling out the campaign in Namibia, but it has been rolled out in South Africa for mm -hmm. the past three years and also in uh, Zambia and also in Tanzania. Yes. And 
for us, what we've done is we've partnered with um, Women's Action for Development and we've rolled out a series of training sessions for our men. And we've also, you know, used our men to send a message to fellow Namibians. So we're going to use our men that we have trained yes. to make videos and to share that with our consumers yes. and to show that our men are ambassadors. The men that make this beer are ambassadors for change mm. and they are our champion men. Yeah. And so, yeah, so we've made a series of videos and we've uh, uh, made them take pledges to live by virtues that we have designed these are virtues of a champion men you know yeah. champion men uh, nurture their fields champion men make the world a better place yes champion men mentor the next generation mm. and we we've filmed them making this pledge and just to send a message to the public that you know let's take a stand as men yes Yes. So with everything going on in Namibia, especially around gender-based violence, um, is there any message that you have out there for not just our young men, but for all men yes. and women out there in Namibia? You know, um, like we said in this, in this uh, campaign, is that there really is no excuse and we need to start taking a stand and encouraging um, change in behavior and I think that everyone should reach out to Women's Action mm -hmm. for Development because they roll out a series of training sessions and they really are trying to educate our people on the root causes of gender-based violence and how we can dismantle this um, societal structures that are linked to patriarchy which are the ultimate cause of gender-based violence so I would say reach out and educate yourself and get involved with community action yes. so that we can all make the change together. Yes. Well, thank you, Alex. Thank you for joining us in studio. Thank you for being here and giving us a brief overview of not just AB and Biff, but of Black Label as well. And with your No Excuse campaign, we really do appreciate your presence here. Um, and I hope to see a lot more of yes. you in studio with us. Yes. Thank okay. you so much for having me. You're welcome. And that's it for today. I, Frankie, pledge to build a band of brothers. I, Michael, a pledge to define myself by my character. I, Gesser, pledge to use my strength for good. My name is Ethan, and I pledge to nurture my fields. I am Aubrey, and I pledge to make the world a better place. My name is Salatiel Shinedima, the Executive Director of Women's Action for Development, and I pledge to mentor the next generation. Welcome. Today with me in studio, I have Liz Curtis from Distal Namibia, and we're just going to talk about a little bit um, about road safety and what Savannah Lemon brings to the table when it comes to road safety. Liz, welcome to the studio. Hi, Eunice. Thank you for having me here. How and are you doing? I'm doing very well today. Um, looking forward to the festive season and uh, seeing what 2021 brings us. That's great. So, Liz, just a quick thing. Um, Savannah Lemon. When we talk about Savannah Lemon, why is it that Distel focuses so much on putting this brand out, especially during the festive season? In terms of the road safety, yes. um, Savannah is a, a bit of a maverick brand, mm -hmm. and, but it also is a very human brand. And we get that um, we all make mistakes and there's different ways of doing things. So everybody wants to race somewhere to get some, um, to a party on time yeah. or uh, you want to check that SMS. And actually what we need to do for road safety is um, change that attitude yeah. and sort of take a step back, look at um, the bit, what people are doing and take a more relaxed view on that. Yeah. Yes, you've got a, a WhatsApp that comes through, but you don't need to check it now. Rather be safe and uh, arrive at your destination and then check it. Um, and it's that, that sort of attitude change that needs to come in mm -hmm. um, from all Namibians yeah. in terms of um, how, we re how we react and uh, um, how we can be unapologetically responsible on the road yeah. that will lead to a decrease in uh, road accidents. And that falls perfectly into Savannah Lemon's um, tone and, uh, and who we are, being more responsible yeah. um, in terms of our behavior. Okay. So um, would you say within the... For how many years has Savannah Lemon actually been a part of this um, campaign and pushing this through? Uh, this is our second year. Okay. Um, so, 
uh, it, it is something that we believe in. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we will definitely be part of the road safety for the long term. Okay. So for, for the past two years, would you say because of this campaign that you've been driving and pitching and, you know, like there was a time that I drove and I saw at the, at the Robert stand at the traffic lights that there were um, people handing out Savannah lemon, obviously to promote road safety um, during the festive season. So would you say that the road accidents have decreased, like there's been a decrease in this? They've definitely been a decrease in road accidents, um, but whether it is directly related to the campaign, mm -hmm is difficult to say. Yeah. Um, I do think the campaign does make a difference. Yes. Um, there are many different um, activities around road safety. Mm -hmm. And I think this is something where um, it's another fantastic example of what mm -hmm. Namibians can achieve when we pull together. Um, because there are many initiatives around road safety. Mm -hmm. And December last year saw a drop in road accidents. And obviously over this year with travel restrictions, there has been a big drop in accidents. Yeah. So um, I would like to see that this festive season, uh, we can just uphold that yeah. and, keep the, uh, and keep the accidents down. Yeah. So I know that a lot of people have been buzzing in all honesty when it comes to um, alcoholic beverages that are non-alcoholic. Um, would you say that Savannah Lemon is 100% non-alcoholic? What's the take on that? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, now, uh, Savannah Lemon is a non-alcohol. Yes. Which means that it has trace amounts of alcohol. Okay. Um, it has 0.3%. Yes. Um, which is where that classification comes in. So mm. anything that's less than 0.5% yeah. is classified as a non-alcoholic. And so Savannah, sits, Savannah Lemon sits there um, in that category as a 0.3%. Okay. Um, but you would have to drink 20 Savannah Lemons in an <laughs> hour Yo, that's uh, a lot. <laughs> to be able to, to reach anywhere near being um, affected by it. Oh, okay. That's great. So basically, we should be looking forward to Distel and Savannah Lemon being a part of this huge, huge campaign every year. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, so, then. Yes, it is something that we definitely believe in. And um, it's somewhere where, as I said, Savannah Lemon fits beautifully with that tone of uh, being unapologetically responsible. Mm. Don't overtake the wedding party mm. to get to the wedding before them. Rather, take a relaxed view, laugh at yourself, yeah. arrive there so that you can party when you get there. Yes. Um, so definitely, Savannah Lemon will be there um, going forwards as well. That's great. Well, thank you, Liz. Thank you for joining me in studio and thank you for just giving us a brief overview of Savannah Lemon. And I hope this was very insightful for you guys. Thank, thank you for watching. You.